Hey everyone, we've got a pretty good game for you today. We've got a Mega Manectric Garbodor with some um, water techs, basically, against uh, Night March. Now, um, this matchup comes often down to whether Night March can get enough to kill a Mega Manectric in one hit. The water techs I run here, I believe, are two Kyrims and a Keldeo. They're mostly for things like land bats, um, and uh, often Kyrim can just attack as a uh, sort of one prize Manectric. Keldeo is actually pretty useful as well to reset the Blizzard burn. Most of the time you don't want to put them down if you're getting Garbodor out, but some matchups, including land bats, Garbodor isn't actually that important. You do want to get it down, but um, of course their whole luchas can then uh, damage your Manectrix super effective. So um, yeah, but that's not that matchup. This is uh, Mega Manectric versus Night March. Now, as you can see here, Adam battle compresses and gets uh, two. Okay, so he gets two lampants in the discard and an N. Now, uh, you know, a savvy player there would notice that that's only two lampants. It's only so. It's quite possible he has two prized or just a very bad hand, and he needs to via seeker for the N. No, he doesn't get anything off the trainer's mail. And he just goes VS Seeker for the end. So that tells you it's probably quite a bad hand, not necessarily the, that he has two Lampants prized. And uh, check the. <laughs> clearly, I had a bad hand there because I checked the top card and it was Trainer's Mouth, but it wasn't meant to be. So just wait there for some shuffling up. Put a little dice counter there just to see how many uh, marches are in the discard pile. And then we both draw to six. Um, looks like he battle compresses again. No, he discards a lampant. The next thing you'd expect from discard is another lampant. But there goes a pump kaboo. So this should tell you for almost definite, unless he's playing some next level mind games, that a lampant is prized. Now I do consider it possible to, you know play this as like a you know next level mind game to not discard all the lampants so your opponent plays based on a fewer you know expecting fewer night marches but yeah <laughs> I think here they're just prized uh, they're not spaced apart very well so get them to just do that and there they are so he gets five marches in the discard turn one night march can do a lot more and um, often does but there's no need for it here because he's not attacking turn one. So really he just wants to set up enough so that he can guarantee a, a knockout on the next turn. On the first turn that he can attack. So he gets Ultra Ball. He can just he can go for Shamans here and start uh, setting up. But like I said, there's probably not much need to. So you probably just want to go and uh, set up a bit of a board state. Maybe get a Marcher on the field. Oh, he actually just gets Ultra Ball and then passes. Okay, so, um, on my turn, I echo bike, discard an NG, and I think that's an N, which is useful. Um, Ultra Ball discarding a Juniper and a Garbodor. I'm not quite sure what card must be in my hand except the N that makes, uh, you know, discarding Garbodor so powerful or, you know, so necessary over the other card, but it must have been quite important because I'm shuffling it back in. I honestly can't think what possible card in my deck that could be at all. So, <laughs> there we go. Um, unless it's another Garbodor, which it might be. That's the only card I could see. Or a Mega Manectric, that's possible as well. Got up to six cards and uh, attached to the Manectric. Got a Floatstone on the Keldeo there. So I can retreat and just put, say, Kyrim active to take a hit for a turn. You notice I don't attach the spirit link there. Now, I know I can be end, but, the I mean, I can be zero six or megaphoned as well. And losing a spirit link is very, very bad, since this deck only runs three. Well, as you can see, he's got Dimension Valley in his hand. So he can go for an attack with the Mew this turn. If he puts down either a Joltic or a Pump Kaboon and NG. Okay, so he puts just the Fighting NG down. 
Fighting energy is, of course, just for uh, land bats, mostly. You can um, snipe sort of two uh, focus ashes off with hammerhead. That's the best way to go about it. Lightning energy is very viable as well because you can um, do 110 and uh, attach two energy, basic energy from the discard for just one lightning. But um, I think fighting is just the better type here. He gets a switch and goes into the Mew. No, he junipers the Joltik in his hand, which I'm not really. I don't really agree with because while it gets another Night Marcher in the discard pile, he's attached fighting, so he needs. He basically needs to guarantee a Joltik coming down on the field. Discards there with compressor, a Joltik and a Pump Kaboo. So that should tell me he doesn't have his full uh, set of 12 Marchers accessible because he only discards two. And uh, he discarded one. Okay, so he drew, drew the other Joltik, but he discarded it before the Juniper, I guess very fearful that he won't get enough marches even to knock out the Kyrim. So if, um, you know, you're paying a lot of attention in this type of game, you can tell that the Night Marcher doesn't have too many. And I put down another Manectric and um, get an NG. I actually uh, picked that up in a second, because just what... Kind of uh, kind of bad because of the ordering, having played a card and everything, but putting uh, the Manectric down first was obviously a bad choice, so in a, I guess in a real tournament scenario, I at least hopefully wouldn't have done that, but so we allow that. I get Shaman off the Ultra Ball, I attach the Spirit Link first and then set up for six, and uh, I draw like basically one rough seas and some unplayable cards except the end I think that's either one or two other rough seas in my hand then I have to end a really unfortunate thing actually is the uh, the Mew doesn't have a tool on it and so I can't hit it for 120 for a kill but the other thing is I actually wouldn't necessarily want to because I want a mega evolve and I also want to get um, uh, energy from the discard pile onto the field. So even though that does 10 less and doesn't kill the Mew, it's still often very worth it to do that. Because if I just kill the Mew, I have no more energy on the board. Joltik can come up with a muscle burn and just Night March for a knockout. So now he needs two more Night Marches for a knockout. So I put the Mega Electric down. Looks like I don't have anything else to go on to except the Kyrim. So I put the one lightning on there. This is a little unfortunate, it's not a water or a two energy, but that's just the way it goes. So he's going to have a lot of hard work to kill the Mega Manectric this turn. And uh, I already saw that he most likely has some Night Marchers prized. And when you see something like that, you can play a little bit riskier, but like I said, uh, an opponent could be playing some serious mind games with you and uh, <laughs> secretly have uh, another Lampant in the deck or another Night Marcher ready to go. I mean, in a, he could have had this, that Lampant in his hand every turn and not been able to discard it. You know, things like that can happen, but it's just not very likely. So I'm going on the bet here that he doesn't have enough just to knock out the Mega Manectric. Not that I really could do anything else, but doing 110 is uh, better than nothing. He actually Lysander's the Chiron. Basically, uh, the only non-EX attacker in the deck at this moment in time is Chiron. And if he kills both, then all he has to do is kill a Mega Manectric and a Shaman, and that's game over. I do, of course, have Trubbish down as well, but I expect that he uh, doesn't plan to use Mew for too long after this. So he puts a DC on the Joltik, knocks out the Kyrim. I also think he's just fishing for uh, Night Marchers. I think maybe just hitting the Manectric might have been better because missing a KO on it's going to be very big. And you can KO the uh, Kyrim at any time. Versus he Seeker here for an N. Looks like I didn't really have much else. And it also lowers his hand down to 4. I'm also about to take two prizes by the looks of it. And uh, yeah, it's not very well spaced out, but there is a lightning energy under that Manectric. Just the yellow of the Manectric makes it quite hard to see. I draw six there. Looks like I drew into two rough seas again, but I can just put it down. 
Um, actually, looks like I don't. Trainer's Mail. I'm not sure what to take there. I've already got Lysander in hand, but maybe I think this hand is... I can just sit on this hand and win with Lysanders. I also um, <laughs> didn't really know, I guess, that you don't have to take a card with Trainer's Mail until... Uh, <laughs> after this game where it was pointed out to me you don't actually have to take one I mean I'm sure I'm sure I did know that but just forgot but here I can just uh, I can load up the shaman because I can actually sky return for the knockout on Joltik which is very good and then I can just go into Trubbish and either force him to have Lysander or another um uh well just force him to have Lysander or take a uneven prize and he actually discards another marcher there but doesn't um doesn't up the count which is a little annoying but I think uh can be forgiven. Shuffle up there. I'm not sure really what he's checking for. I think maybe just counting the number of night marchers. I do actually think it's nine, so Needs to uh, needs to put that out. I think he's missing the KO by ten, so he probably attaches to the Shaman just to Sky Return at some point, or just to Sky Return now is uh, reasonably viable. I don't have Rough Seas down. He's already seen me play two, and then he can go into Mime, which isn't you know threatening, and is another thing I have to kill to get it out of the way. Of course, he did see me take the Lysander, so. I don't know if that's really worth it. And this turn I can just Lysander the Joltik and knock it out. So maybe the Night March was just better. And I'd get rough seas anyway. So he'd still have to hit another Night Marcher. In positions like this, Night March is very unfavorable. Even though I don't have a whole lot of much going except the one Mega Manectric, I'd just about enough to basically steal the game. I think uh, here I've probably attached to the... okay I choose not to attach to the Keldeo. I'm not really sure why. I think it's... I'm just not expecting to ever get three energy on it with the hand I have. And I'm also not expecting him to just be able to kill the Mega Manectric. Because now that's ten marches in the discard pile. And like I said I do think he doesn't have enough. Yeah, so I sky return here. Maybe I'm letting the Keldeo die because the Trubbish is more important, but no, I let the Trubbish die. I should have attached the energy to Keldeo because I actually uh, sky return and picked up some more energy. But it looks like I drew him an Ectric off the prizes, so it's not too big a deal. He actually does have another Joltic, so Muscle Band uh, Lysander could actually knock out my Mega Manectric and in the game. And he sets up for six, but it's looking like he probably doesn't have it. I actually guess I expected two marches to be prized there. And instead he ends, which um is a safer play, but probably not gonna be game winning here. What he really needed was uh, a switch, which actually no, I think both switches have been played. Night March really can't play too many switch cards because it's um it'll just like uh clog the deck up and it runs too many draw cards really. It it needs every space it has. There ends himself to four, which actually for Nightmarch isn't that good. And yeah, it just has to pass the turn. I attach the Manek trick. Um I do believe there's actually no energy in the discard pile now. Yeah, so just do a check. Now um if he gets a muscle band he actually gets a knockout on my Mega Manectric, but I think at this point I can just go for it because one more energy on my Manectric and the Lysander for the Shaman is a knockout, and I have an energy in hand. And uh, yeah, VS Seeker prize, so I kind of expected. And <laughs> I very, very non subtly put the Lysander on top of the deck there, which is um, quite funny. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, no subtlety about that at all. Just put it straight on top. 
and just wait. Hey Junipers, now I know I've got the game. Because all I have to do is attach an NG and Lysander. So muscle bands, the Mega Manectric. So it actually does die. Oh, the revive is really questionable. Oh, he has eleven marches in the discard pile. Rather than ten, I believe. Yeah, so he can actually put another one back there, because that will get him eleven next turn and actually the win if I didn't just have Lysander in hand, which I <laughs> put straight on top of the deck. Which is, uh, yeah, obviously so smart of me. But he didn't end. I don't know if he had access to it. And I think he needs to take the KO this turn and just uh, hope I don't draw well off it. But yeah, that's game. I just put Keldeo active, attach, <laughs> muscle band just for good effect, VS Seeker, Lysander the Shaman. And um, yeah, retreat and take the knockout. Yeah, so uh, probably a bit of a reluctant handshake. Interesting thing there was I actually only got one uh, Mega Manectric going. And uh, that really isn't what you want to be doing in this type of deck. What you want to be doing is getting a few going, cycling between them, and uh, you know, going from um, one into the other and also attaching to non exes. But I didn't really get any of that going. I just had one throughout the game that wasn't really targeted and uh, non exes were targeted instead. And that's actually, I think, why I won. I think often with Night March, sometimes, I mean, really, you just have to target the energy rather than try and, like, fix your prizes to be normal. Because if you don't Lysander at the right time, they can make your prizes odd again. So it's not actually that beneficial to, uh, to Lysander anything until, you know, you can really take the game. The best way really to approach that was probably to kill the Chiron active first turn, or maybe even leave the Mimer, and then um, and not take the KO. And wait, wait for Mega Manectric to come up and just take a KO on it, and then um, Mega Manectric only does one ten to Mew, so you can actually take two KOs in that time, most likely anyway. It was it's obviously quite hard since you're going to need ten Night Marches in the discard pile. And with even one prize, that's all of them but one. And then the other one has to be on the field. But of course, Revive mitigates that a little bit. And uh, yeah, it makes it quite reasonable, I think. So yeah, there we go. That's um, quite a pretty, pretty good game, I thought. I'll uh, probably not be recording anything else between now and uh, when I fly out to Worlds. And in fact, uh, I'm pretty glad I got to showcase probably the two decks I'm considering most. Night March I think has gone very under the radar and uh, I'm not really giving it, uh, <laughs> not enough people watch us for it to be um, gaining enough positive attention from this video. So uh, that's good. And also it lost, so that's also fine. Um, Mega Manectric, Garbador, obviously very strong. A um, couple of water things also helps you balance out some matchups. Like the worst matchups actually I think are you know, a Night March that draws well, a Groudon, a uh, Kyogre and Landbats. But I've, in testing, managed to handle most of them. So I think it's most reasonable pick. I think uh, you're going to see a lot of Mega Manectric. actually have uh, now since put in one Max Potion in Mega Manectric as well, just for the Mirror match. I don't think it's, uh, you know, an auto win by any means for the Mirror. And if they play more, it's uh, probably still a loss. But that one can... Uh, either keep you in a game which you're um, very likely to lose or uh, put you so far ahead in a game that you're going to win. So yeah, there you have it. And um, Night March is, a, of course, just really strong. Like Being able to do <laughs> 180 turn one is uh, nothing to be sniffed at. And uh, running just three shame in 4-4-4 four, four, four of the Night Marches and two Mew just to attack. It has loads of options because you can also... Quaking Punch, say, to kill a Trubbish against Toad Garb. Uh, if you run uh, Zerosic as the uh, updated list that, um, in fact, uh, Ryan Morehouse made, has, uh, you can <laughs> remove a DC off Toad, and they can't always continue the Quaking Punching. So that's good. You can even overrun uh, to kill a Trubbish in this deck with Muscle Band, and then um, 
that means you have 20 less damage that you have to deal with Night March. There's just a load of really um, really cool things about this uh, this deck and uh, the few little techs that are in it. And like I said, Fighting Energy, of course, you can Hammerhead remove two um, Focus Sashes, which may be enough to keep you in the game. And Zorosic, of course, removes the Focus Sash as well. Sometimes, actually, um, Fighting Energy can be used to uh, use the second attack with Landorus if you manage to get two on, which is very strong. I mean, you you end up discarding them, but you can actually do like, a lot of damage with that. And in fact, you often don't want to discard, as I think you only get 170 against the Landorus. But anyway, I've uh, waffled on for long enough. I hope to see many of our UK players at Worlds, and I reckon... Um, I reckon it's UK's year. We're doing really well in testing, and uh, a lot of people have come up with a lot of good things, and I hope to see that continuing to next year as well. So uh, for now, goodbye everyone, and I'll see you afterwards.